So 2013 marks the advent of XGBoost. XGBoost is a gradient boosted algorithm that changed the face of data science. Suddenly, everybody had access to a high-performing ML algorithm that could scale to large data sets. A little after, it gave rise to its little siblings like LightGPM and CatBoost. So in this video, I want to talk about gradient boosting and the way it works. This will give us good foundations to address more complex algorithms like XGBoost and its siblings. Let's get into it. So let's imagine that we have a training data. So we have some features and we have a target. Think about this as a tabular data. So we have some columns and each sample is represented by a rows of features. Each row is associated to its target. The target is what we want to learn. So we're going to feed the features into the model and the model is going to try to predict something that is close to the target. So training a model means trying to learn the relationship between the features and the target. The gradient boosted trees algorithm is an iterative process. First, what we do is we use this training data and we train an initial decision tree. We're going to call this decision tree the base decision tree. This is a very simple tree and we're going to iterate to correct the mistakes that this tree is making. So now we take the same training data and we use the decision tree that we just trained and we predict on it and we get some predictions. So we look at these predictions and we compare those predictions to the target and the differences between the predictions and the target are the errors. So those are the errors that we are making when we are predicting with this new trained model when we compare to the target. So now we're going to use these errors as a target for a new model. We're going to use the same features and we're going to train another decision tree, but this time this decision tree is going to learn how to predict those errors. And now we can combine those two trees. We have this initial tree that we train to learn the target and we have this second tree that we train to learn the error that the first tree was making on the target. So when we are using the training data and we are feeding it to predict to this new combined model, we get a second set of predictions. With this second set of predictions, we are making a second set of errors if we compare to the target. So now we can use this new set of errors as a new target to train a third decision tree. This decision tree is going to learn the error that we are making when we are predicting with the base tree and the second correcting tree. So now we have three trees. We have a base tree, we have a first correcting tree, and we have a second correcting tree. The first correcting tree is going to predict the first correcting predictions, and the second correcting tree is going to predict the second correcting predictions. So we have added two correcting trees that are correcting the predictions that the first base tree is making. So when we inject this training data in this ensemble of trees, we get another set of predictions. The idea is that every time we are correcting this initial tree, we are improving the predictions by adding more and more trees. So we have an iterating process. First, we are using the error of the previous step to learn a new tree. And then we are adding this new tree to the already known set of trees and we are predicting a new set of predictions. By using this new set of predictions, we can compute a new error, and this new error is going to be used in the next iteration to train a next tree that will be correcting further the ensemble of trees. So the full model is a combined set of trees. We are adding little by little trees that are correcting the initial predictions and that are converging little by little to a better prediction. Let me introduce the concept of shrinkage. XGBoost is using these techniques to make sure that the new added trees are not overly impacting the previous predictions. Each new adding tree may be adding some errors to the original predictions, so we want to make sure that we add trees in a conservative manner. So instead of considering all the predictions of each tree similarly, we're going to shrink the predictions of the correcting trees. So when we are predicting with our training data, we have the base prediction that is the first initial tree and all the remaining trees are shrink 
compared to their original values. This means that each correction that we add to the initial prediction will be somewhat minimized. So each new tree that we add to the ensemble of tree will have a minimal impact to correcting and potentially impacting the quality of the ensemble model. This is to avoid overfitting. We don't want that there is one tree that is going to bring too much impact to the overall prediction. When we shrink the predictions of the correcting trees, we have what we call a learning rate. This learning rate is between 0 and 1. And every time we are predicting a new prediction, we are going to minimize the impact of the correcting trees. So this new set of predictions here will not be impacted as much by a new tree that may be overfitting.